the majority of people I've met who believe in Bitcoin, they are not open about like the potential for it to fail. Mm -hmm. Um, and two, okay. I feel like the other problem with people that believe in Bitcoin is they're like maximalists. Like what happens if Bitcoin just stays like 30 K for the rest of like eternity? Three, two, one, and we're live. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me on another episode of Jesus, your host, George Mora. And today I've got some guests for you guys. I've got some great guests for you guys. We want to talk about money. We want to talk about hustle. We want to talk about ambition. We're going to talk about our past, girls, whatever the fuck comes up. This is the fuck. This is the finance episode, all right? This, this is the one where we're really going to get dive deep into people who know what they're talking about because I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. And okay. anything that is said on this podcast, there is no fucking financial advice whatsoever, bro. I don't think anybody's qualified to give you advice, nah. all right? So everything we're saying, we're just fucking... We're just, we're just saying it for content. I don't know what the fuck. The all right, drugs. we're learning. We're learning from each other, all right? Yeah, we're, 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 we're learning we're from each other, all right? Yeah, so today, I got my boy, Kenny Correa. Let's go. And his boy, Nick, all right? He don't want me to call him a finance bro, but he's a finance bro. <laughs> he's a finance bro at heart. <laughs> I'm dead. All right? But no, no, you're, you're a, a financial analyst, right? That's right. That's a financial right. analyst. And I you, work in the airline. You work in the government, yeah. bro. That's it. You're just airline a, a secret FBI agent, bro. You catch fucking pedophiles. <laughs> I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're building your persona. We can't get too into detail, but yeah, something like that. We'll <laughs> keep you a mystery. We'll keep you, but, but, but I brought you guys both on because you guys are both ambitious. You guys are both hustlers. You guys know how to save. You guys have a good lifestyle, good routine. You know what I'm saying? You carry yourself well in the world. You guys are very professional. And you guys have achieved some big things for the age that you're at now, right? So let me start with your age. How, how old are you guys? 27. 27. 27. 27. 26. So I'm the fucking baby, bro. <laughs> Shit, little bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a little finance bro. Little, bro. little podcast okay. bro. <laughs> All right. So yo, no, yo, Nick, talk to us about, um, talk about your financial game, bro. Talk about what, you, yeah, what, yeah, what do you yeah. do in your job and how do you get paid lots of fucking money for it? Oh, boy. Okay, so yeah, we're going to start it, start it at, at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, I were Establish the credibility, but um, so I study finance at school. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what my undergrad degree is in. What school did you go to? Marquette University. Where's that? It's in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Shout out to Jimmy Butler. Wisconsin. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah, yeah we're, baby. we're known for our basketball team, but we like sucks. Did you join a frat? I actually did. I actually did. Oh, it was kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, like I was going to say, I mean, this was like an academic No, no, like, like... It, was, it was kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, what would you guys do? Would you go like streak and or some shit or like some euphoria shit? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh I mean, yeah. Like, are you cool with them or are you like, like if you see somebody on the street, like from the frat, are you going to be like, yo, Sigma Alpha male or some bullshit? I won't. Probably not. That. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah, okay. Yeah. I did it because I thought it was cool. And then like afterwards, I like, I didn't really feel it. Like I got a girlfriend, like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I kind of skipped out. Like yeah. afterwards, it's more for like the single guy who's like, yo, right. like I'm trying to make friends. I did a I'm trying to break up. So I joined the a fraternity post breakup, and um, it got me into some trouble, and I got into some like degenerate shit. So yeah. then, like by, by the time I was like a junior or senior, I kind of had to like you know distance myself and disassociate a little bit. Mm -hmm. And also, I got into another relationship, so she wasn't too happy about that. So oh I kind of had to like. <laughs> all right. So know, yeah. All right. Side. So back to you, Nick. Sorry. No um, yeah. You went. You went to Wisconsin. You studied. Finance, finance right yeah. and uh, I think what's important about that is like the, the credibility because we're gonna talk about companies and we're talking mm -hmm. about markets and shit is like my degree was primarily focused around fundamental analysis of companies and so we I'll talk in the mic just, yeah you just I'm moving on perfect nice we we basically like managed a certain portion of the school's endowment fund and we like pitched companies and we had to pitch them to all the fellow classmates and get oh, them wow. to approve it and we had to do like you know models of the company to forecast their earnings and revenues mm -hmm. and and basically recommend companies that we thought would make the money and that involves basically like hours and hours of research or yeah, like yeah. How, how what kind of time span did you have to do this project i mean these are like think about your like final exams like our final exam is giving a pitch in front of all of our peers and mm -hmm. and trying to get them to buy your company and it's a bit of like a bragging rights thing like you, yeah. you don't want to spend all this time and everyone would be like Oh, that guy's an idiot like he doesn't know how to pitch good companies mm -hmm. you want to have your company in the portfolio and mm -hmm. and also like did you have tesla in there at that time any I, I covered banks so oh you covered oh sorry only yeah. banks strictly banks all right it was financial services so most of the financials like the ones that i found more interesting because you have like insurance companies which i mm -hmm. fucking hate insurance i don't give a yeah. shit about it and they rip people off so um, oh in insurances 
Yeah, I think insurance okay. is innately like you pay high premiums, and if you never yeah. get into an accident, yeah. well, life insurance. I mean, I mean that's how insurance like insurance in general. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Insurance I mean they have to make money off of you, and the, and mm-hmm. and the thing is that when something goes wrong, they owe you a lot of money, so they have to like overcharge everybody like to uh, compensate for the fact that they're gonna owe a lot relative to what a single person is paying mm. if the event happens. Okay, and then what about retirement funds? Is that also like an insurance or like like 401ks um, retirement i mean funds, that falls like more that. into asset management like a lot of okay a lot of in financial institutions that have multiple like functions within the same company mm-hmm. so i'll give you the one in in milwaukee that like turns all these kids into losers but we'll get to that too okay um <laughs> but they uh the the thing that they do is is um they have like an asset management arm which like they and they take all the money that they get from the life insurance policies and like buy investments and those investments are supposed to make more money over time than like the policies. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but they're primarily an insurance company, but then they have an asset management arm, they have like consulting, they have like different Got different it. things. How much did okay. that set you up for the current position that you're in with the bank that you work for? Yeah. So, well, be, be sorry, before before you answer that question, I wanted to ask you like, yeah. so you were talking about pitches earlier, right? Right. So from what I understand, like one of the best pitches is something you can basically communicate in under a minute the elevator pitch so yes. like yeah the elevator pitch right so like do you have like an elevator pitch for like the banks that you were studying for back then when you were yeah, doing yeah. The project in wisconsin yeah i mean i do like like the the key thing is you have to identify something that the market's missing right because mm-hmm. you have to assume that all of the all of the people that are like setting the value are highly intelligent and that mm-hmm. that goes to a fundamental point is that like the majority of prices are set by institutions which pull in mm-hmm. massive amounts of money like follow the smart money essentially yeah, okay right it's 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 comparable to the smart money like like you know the whole amc thing like there's this whole like thing like oh there's the the, the people in the know like yeah yeah like the reddit reddit and wall street they, propelled they think, that yeah they wall like wall street is synonymous for like people with a lot of money that know what they're doing or like are screwing everyone mm-hmm. basically so i mean some of that's a bit fanatical but like to a point like these people are very smart right and so to find it like in order to tell yourself that it's worth you doing this work and not just buying an index fund and like basically doing no um, no research, a- yeah, no active selection in okay. your investment, you have to be you have to find something that like people are missing, and so uh, that requires um, some understanding. And for example, like I was in the international fund, so I was doing specific research on like one of the I pitched a bank in Indonesia, okay. which it's like it's less followed. Like people don't really understand like Indonesia in America. It's a mm-hmm. place that's far away but the banks make a lot of money. Um, oh, and so okay, like okay. it was one of the companies I pitched put in mm. the fund. So you ba- you basically look for like the most unpopular banks with the most value and then you basically find a way to pitch that at, like yeah. you, you it, find where it's missing in the market. And yeah, like, yeah. It doesn't gonna, have to be necessarily unpopular. It could be just something that's yeah. misunderstood. Mis- okay, misunderstood. Yeah, yeah. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. That's, that's, I think, that's a great way to like put it. Like if you didn't find something that's misunderstood, then, then you're probably like, Especially if you're paying yourself, like mm-hmm. you're not, not adding yeah. value. Yeah, like like I, I like to say with like, you know, people with e commerce and like drop shipping or like yeah. just trading anything to make to make money is basically like you wanna find a product that solves a problem, right? Like you wanna you wanna identify the problem and then you wanna solve that problem and that and that your product is a solution, whatever whatever it may be. Right. right. So that's kinda like your your elevator pitch or like your, the banks yeah, that yeah, you're looking yeah. for, right? Yeah. um so what was, what was your question <laughs> oh yeah so how much like uh did what you did in college contribute to what you currently do yeah like, so, it, was it a smooth transition or so i think there's things that did prepare me um having a an ability to communicate and convince and be persuasive and their personal mm-hmm. skills were like extremely important but at the same point like so i work with like complex options we'll keep it at that because mm-hmm. it's like the most simple way to describe it but you don't learn any of that in school and yeah. so with that i mean that's so that's it, one of the things that's like super cool is like you get a you get a job for a company that does stuff that no one understands. When you start understanding it, like your your value as an employee goes up significantly because exactly. no one else understands it. Yeah. And it, in the institutional world, there's a extreme need for these kind of products or like these trades services. Yeah, services or trades or whatever. Um, and being able to accurately explain it and define what's a good investment opportunity in like these more complex products mm-hmm. uh it's a bit like a rainmaker position to get into so it didn't prepare me because i had to learn that shit on the job mm, i like that i like that so basically you went to school college you'd say kind of helped you with the education with how to communicate well with others specifically in this finance in this finance realm yeah and then 
it basically became a skill. Like, hey, I'm going to read through these sheets. I'm going to see where the value is. A lot of people aren't doing this. And yeah. as you're reading these shits, as you're reading these shits over time, you're putting in the work, you're building up your skill. You're looking at them and you're like, all right, you can already identify the things that are that are pointed out faster than, than a person who just graduated, right? Right. And then that makes you valuable. Now that you're like, yo, this guy's going to get, he's going to find all probably these different kinds of valuations. He's, he's got a good career, uh, portfolio or career, I'm assuming beforehand this is how much he's valued at right now. We should pay him this much, right? Yeah. And, and that's and that's also your negotiating power to go be like, yo, like, you know, I'm yeah, looking at these people, other places, yeah. you know what I'm saying, yeah, right? A lot, people, yeah. a lot of people do that shit, yeah. yeah. How much did your degree actually play a part in it? So like, let's just say I start learning how to read charts, right? Mm -hmm. I, I feel like there's a big hype over over trading now. You know, people started talking about Forex. People started talking about options. Robin crypto. Made, yeah, crypto. Yeah. Uh, everyone Robin became, became made, a trader in the last two years. Wait, what's that? So I said everyone, everyone, everyone became a trader in the last two years. Dude, everybody yes. became an expert. Yes. And not, not not just a trader, but an expert. Everyone knows how to mm -hmm. read the market. And so like, what are the what's the likelihood of just an average Joe that became an overnight expert, as I call it? Um, like we're going to get, we get into that because that was important. But I want to make one more point. Yeah. So like yeah, yeah. The, the key thing with my degree, I think, which was mm -hmm. important is it helped steer me down the right path for like my intellectual curiosity. Like I already mm -hmm. had an interest in markets and the way that they function. And that prepared me well because the job that I do now is interesting to me. And like I have kind of a short mm -hmm. attention span. Yeah. So if I'm not interested in something mm -hmm. like I couldn't drag myself through the day. Mm, they, so like i think that was the key point you need to challenge yourself yeah, yeah. yeah. they kind of made you like you said intellectual curiosity yeah. it's kind of like you became a detective and they gave you like the blueprints on how to find what you're looking for right yeah sort of kind of and then and then you you, you apply that to other other places so would you say like let's just say i wanted to be in your position do i how out of the scale of one to ten do i need a do i need a college degree yes Yes, but, I absolutely but need a college I think degree. that's the way that the system's designed. Okay, so it so just like I have the college degree and it helps open doors for yeah, other people yeah. to take me seriously. Exactly. In this, in this like space. the way that the like financial services like system is designed mm -hmm. is that they're highly selective. It used to be that they only took people from Ivy Leagues. Like honestly, that was yeah. that was the old um the kind of boy club. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was the old say. reputation yeah. of like Wall Street banks. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll keep it there. Um now it's not as selective. Um, from a like like they're trying to take people from more different colleges mm -hmm. because they just found out they're getting too many like like basically good on paper students that like couldn't actually adapt to the real I, that, yeah that, and that's what I was gonna say I was gonna yeah. be like yo like couldn't I just pay somebody to go to school get me this degree learn how to talk very well learn how to read some charts and then go to the position and then kind of essentially you know bullshit my way because I never really went to school for it I, I, think, I just I paid somebody to go for school I think for that would it. weed you out. I think, like, I think once bullshitting you, once is a good get, skill. Though. Like, Wait, yeah. sorry, sorry. What bullshitting is a good skill, though. Bullshitting is a great skill. I mean, no, I, right. I think uh, this how is. How far can that get you? Though? No, so how, how so far okay, does that get so you? like far, the, the important thing is like there's a mm -hmm. there's a language of any industry, anything that you do. There's a language yes. of aviation. There's a language right, right. of like finance of TikTok. There's yeah. anything mm -hmm. that you want to be good at. There's a language of it, and so it does help to be interested in it. Like I on my own had my own interest in reading you know articles and reading twitter exactly, yeah. and, and whatever like what would you say some what would you what would you um advise as somebody who's like a beginner like what do you read every day like what do you what do you usually wake up and open charts to or like i'm a twitter something? degenerate twitter degenerate let's, yeah. let's go any any uh like thing I that you follow, follow i follow like literally anyone that talks about it well i mean twitter has this like good algorithm that will suggest you people so like if you pick someone up like i'm gonna give the dumbest person ever because they actually suck but jim kramer if you follow Jim Cramer, <laughs> you, can, you can fade all of his picks and make yeah. money. But <laughs> if you follow Jim Cramer, then it's going to tell you other people that are... Like Jim Cramer and yeah, think exactly. like Jim Cramer, exactly. and, you know exactly. what I'm saying, and are kind of on that side yeah, and that yeah. community, right? The same, the same way like you you pick up, you watch some like crypto YouTuber. Right. It's going to send, it's going to give you suggestions of other people. Exactly. That's a good yeah. way to do it. And it takes some care. Like I, I think I think the best thing is have someone that can give you like real advice and mm -hmm. tell you like what's... What's like who who are the charlatans mm. and who actually knows what they're the talking people who about. try to remain objective? Yeah, well, they're charlatans. Like, yeah. like for example, like Andrew Pompliano, that dude is a charlatan. Like he talked Bitcoin's price up the entire way up, mm -hmm. and now that it's falling, and and we'll get into crypto later. Yeah, but now that it's falling, he's got his own like podcast where he just talks about markets. Like the dude just wanted like clout. He did a switch yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of people that are like that. That they're motives for talking about what they're talking are mm -hmm. questionable 
And that exists yeah. in anything you want to learn. Yeah, like they have an agenda. They have a yeah, business yeah, they need yeah, to right. run and their like, business exactly. is like, yo, I'm a crypto channel. I'm going to run a you crypto. You consider that a bullshitter though. And like back to the question, you know, like mm -hmm. how far does bullshit get you? Like if, if I just don't know what I'm talking about, but like, hey, I pay someone to do a degree, like yeah. pay somebody to do like schooling for me, learn finance, learn Excel. You just, you just need a good mentor. Mentor. Like, okay. Mentorship. Yeah. Yes. And like, like, for example, like the, the thing that's really important is the, like, who you are as a person. Yeah. Like if you're in it to be deceitful, like people are gonna pick up on that shit. Yes. Okay. Um, but if you're like, if you're bullshitting merely to like get yourself in the sphere of people who have to made make it, money, like that's, mm -hmm. it's, you should try to be uh, associating yourself with people that are smarter than you. Always. Mm -hmm. Oh, challenging yourself. Isn't it just like challenging yourself? Like mm -hmm. if you're new to an industry, like yeah. there are people that are going to be way smarter than you. Yeah. And if you bullshit, in 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 the sake of like your own um like ego mm -hmm. then like you think you're so smart and yeah. you know everything you're your people are gonna not like you they're yeah. gonna be like that guy's a, the, he's a dickhead he thinks he's like really smart mm -hmm. and because of that they're not gonna want to share things with you so you gotta be humble. so yeah you have to like bullshitting is important because people don't like to talk to stupid people mm -hmm. right but you can't bullshit to the sake of like feeling superior to other people, especially if they're the right people to be learning from. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you wanna have that genuine intellectual curiosity like we were going before, and yeah. then you wanna get a mentor that, in, in my view, I see it as like kind of, they may see a different side, they may have a different opinion mm -hmm. that you have, and you guys are both raising questions and kind of finding, sol sol like solving the problem together using yeah. your fundamentals. Because yeah. everybody has a different, I mean, th there's a general fundamental, right? Pretty much. And then everybody kind of changes their own fundamentals and creates their own perspective and their own agenda. Or yeah, everyone has their own like style of like, the thing yeah. is that like people bring their own strengths and some people aren't comfortable with it. Like they want to, they want to be good at everything. Mm -hmm. Like um, I work with this guy and this dude's like an insane coder. Like he's really, really good at it. And like, it would be very stupid for me to like, try to be as good as him at it because then i would be like i wouldn't have, i wouldn't mm -hmm. be realizing my potential at the company trying to do something that there's someone that's way better than me at so mm -hmm. there's certain things i can recognize what things that like i'm better than him at mm -hmm. and i can hone those skills like i'm very assertive and i am very like persuasive in in my ideas mm -hmm. and and the things that i want to like i guess um push at the company to, to make us money. Cause at the end of the day, like the, the back to your bullshitting point, like cool. your bullshitting can only get you as far as the amount of money you make the company. If you work in the, if you work in corporate at the end of the day, you're valued by how much they pay you relative to how much you make the company. You need results. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so yeah, pretty much. You can't you can't bullshit and not show results. Yeah, yeah. You need to if you're gonna bullshit, right. you better have the results. If you don't talk, them. no game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically, know. what I did get from that conversation is pretty much you could bullshit your way through college, but you have to have a genuine in a genuine intellectual curiosity about this about the subject and surround yourself with people that are either not necessarily like minded, but w want to speak the same financial language that you're speaking. Yeah, and then you guys are constantly going back and forth, right? Yeah, and that's and how you guys find grow. out who's making more money. And then like you find, find out. out who's making. Okay, for example, like a big change that's happened in like so like I'm in I'm in the sales and trading role, mm -hmm. and that's like basically the like large banks they buy and sell securities to make a profit. Like it's it's like market making basically. Yeah. Um, and there's certain businesses like that have become like digitized or or been basically taken over by electronic like platforms yeah like what, what, what like an example for example that? stock trading mm -hmm. back in the day on wall street there used to be people and their job was to like for example take positions in apple or take mm -hmm. positions in in any company but i just bring up apple because everyone's gonna know yeah it. um and now like th that's done by computers mostly yeah but pretty much it'd be paper trading back then yeah. and yeah. now it's because now it's digital trading exactly well it's, it's actually voice like it would be they're, they're basically, there's, there's sales. Sales, mm -hmm. they cover clients. And the clients are like the institutions, like hedge funds. We'll stick with hedge funds because it's a fun word and people yeah. can like kind it's of relate hedge to funds, it. Baby. Yeah, hedge, hedge funds, funds are going to hit up their sales people and be like, I want like to buy, I don't know, 5 million of like whatever, like Biogen, like this yeah. pharmaceutical company. And so they're going to be like, fine, I'm going to talk to my trader and see like where the price is. And they're going to give them a price because they're asking in so much size. Like 
it's not like something like if you go on robin hood like people are trading like ten dollars like it's it's fine like you can just move like you can you get different prices at those you levels can, but that's what i'm saying you could yeah. submit your order and you're irrelevant in the market yeah. but like these people that are are trading are like mm -hmm. these institutional clients it's called like sell side buy side whatever but the they're they have so much money that if they were to just like i don't know like not trade through a bank they would get shitty prices because they would move the market gotcha. people would know like what they're doing mm -hmm. and they try to like pick them off can you define them, what move mm -hmm. the market is just for like everyone watching. yeah yeah like move the market okay say say you wanted to buy something we'll pick like something else fun like gamestop this thing it's trading like uh, kind of like a hundred dollars right now okay so if say if someone wanted to buy a hundred million dollars worth of gamestop moving the market is like say the price is a hundred if they're going to come in and start buying and and basically the their size that they want to trade in is so obvious to the market that the price is going to shoot up to like 120 dollars mm -hmm. and they're going to get a shitty price and then it's going to collapse back down to 100 dollars. so that's like what moving the market is okay it's basically mm -hmm. when you want to buy or sell and you get a way shittier price because you do it in so much size that there mm -hmm. isn't enough uh, supply or demand to, to okay. offset that. So do they negotiate? They negotiate the price, or well, they, just, they well, just hit up people and they're like, "Yo, yeah, this is the price." Banks today. naturally have larger positions in mm -hmm. these securities, and they're able to offer them like prices so that like it'll be more opaque in like the way that it's it's actually okay. like synthesized yeah. by the market. But how knowledgeable are these investors? So if I have five million dollars, like, am I do I do I have a, a big background on like what I want to invest in, or do you like do these investors rely on banks? to to pitch them stuff in a way or are they just very yeah, very knowledgeable question. people that's a good question so like what you reference is like yeah. someone that has five million dollars like that could be anyone like it could right, be right. like someone that just got rich like on their own like media company like, or oil yeah. company so Go. there are a lot of people with a lot of money mm. and don't know what they're doing like shout out dave portnoy um <laughs> dave portnoy love that dude bro i love him too but he doesn't know what he's doing but yeah i know he has no idea he started trading in a great time <laughs> he's a but, real he's a retail trader but but then then there's the other side of it which are like hedge funds mm -hmm. and they take money from only rich people and they're really good at what they're doing like they wouldn't they wouldn't be here still if they were bad at what they were doing okay. because the hedge fund industry is very like cannibalistic like if you're not the best then you're not getting money from people and so these institutions are very secretive like they're they're getting ahead because they have algorithms that can spot like dislocations in markets yeah like, or, like sentimental or, or algorithms right like set like sent market or just market structure okay. or like like they know like this bank is selling a bunch of stuff and so they get in front of it because they're because they're the system. algorithm picks it up exactly okay nice. yeah got you and so so there's a, there's a wide spectrum like just because you have a, just because a player has a lot of money doesn't mean that they're smart or dumb like there's there's this guy bill huang he like ran this family office out yeah. of hong kong and this dude was just like taking massive amounts of leverage and like blew himself up. And yeah, he, he like lost 50, 30 billion. I yeah, think, it was insane. Like that. It was like, like the most money that anybody's ever, he, not yeah. only did he lose all of his money, he lost the bank's money, which and is it, pretty impressive. It's hard to it, do that. Yeah, shit. and it was like 30 fucking billion dollars or yeah, something yeah, like that. He just kept so over leveraging leverage, himself. Sure. He was using no, over yeah. leverage. It was like 5x yeah. leverage. Like was, margin. Stay away from margin, guys. Margin. <laughs> yeah, it's margin, margin. Don't blow yourself yeah. up. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Fucking crazy. Anyways, yeah, so like a wide... you, you work for a bank, right? Yeah. Have right. you ever worked for a hedge fund before? I'm not. All my clients are hedge funds, though. Are your clients are hedge funds? So like um, for hedge funds, like, do they make money essentially by like kind of like pre-IPOing? Like they'll get like a person with five million dollars and they'll be like, yo, listen, like this is this is on the ground, this is about to hit the market or whatever. Like you want to pre-IPO, like come come so here. The, the thing is that regulations around that kind of investment, like regulations around the stock market mm -hmm. have like evolved quite significantly since 2000. Mm -hmm. Like 2000 was wild, wild west, where like people were getting insider information and it was like not prosecuted mm -hmm. like nancy Pelosi this year though right oh god jesus christ right i mean there's no rules against congress so it could be true but uh, oh yeah but but that's what people were speculating yeah, yeah, right yeah, like yeah, yo yeah, like that's yeah, not yeah. fair you can't do inside trading i bitch. mean i mean there were all those people that like made well there's two things and and this is important like after this we should really bring this up so r remind me about that but talking talking basically about ipos one i don't work in equities my bank doesn't even have an equities position or they don't have an equities division so I'm not going to like claim to be um, the most knowledgeable about IPO trading. Yeah. But the way that it generally works is that institutions get early access to, to IPOs. And typically what they'll do is they'll sell stocks that are about to go public a little bit below fair value 
so that they they go up on the first trading day. Um, but there's like a lock a lockup period, and and basically during that lockup period, anybody that got IPO mm-hmm. shares can't sell during it. Is it because like anyone would just like yeah, hey, you got a better price like and immediate, you immediate yeah. immediately sell yeah, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to make a profit? So that like there's sense. there's protections against it, but like once those what you've seen is once though like this is something that like certain people like traders watch is if a, if an IPO has gone up since it since it like went public um and the lockup expire typically those stocks sell off afterwards because because anybody that's up since they like bought into the IPO mm-hmm. it's just like natural mm-hmm. like why wouldn't i take profit on it so okay. like that that's okay. that's one thing but like back to your question about hedge funds like how like how do they make money yeah how do they make money yeah the the key thing is is that one they're leveraging banks um we have like access i would say to like key information about how like markets are are working like what people are talking about what kind of flows are going through or what positions that uh, our research or our traders like and we're communicating that to those clients and they may or may not be acting on them if that makes sense okay so yeah. so it's not like it's not illegal but it's like definitely an information advantage to have that relationship mm-hmm. because these are like large players in these financial markets yeah. and like the decisions that they make have consequences for how the price and you guys are kind of like analyzing those those uh predictions and then or you guys are analyzing those consequences and trying to make and those trying to give them the best trade yeah like like yeah. okay i think this is gonna happen how should you like what should you mm-hmm. do so like walk me through like a day in like your life like what time do you wake up in the morning what are you like doing like i wake up at seven seven a.m um, <laughs> So, yeah, I wake up at seven, like sit in the bath for 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> like I just sit in- brush your teeth, I assume. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> You need to relax. I'm not good at waking like, up. Is, like, th- is this job so mentally straining? I, I think it is. Like, I think it's a really interesting thing is it's like the mental kind of, I'm not going to call it strain, but the mental capacity that you use up mm-hmm. in in getting passionate about opportunities that you find and being able to communicate. Like, because- you have to understand is that when you work with these institutions, there's an extremely high barrier in order to speak the same language as them and be taken serious. Mm-hmm. And so you have to be on your game. Like you can't say like stupid shit. Yeah. Like people, yeah. people create- don't even bring up Wall Street type shit. Like like Wall Street bets. Like, like YOLO. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, I mean, no, no, hey, no. I mean, you talk, you talk <laughs> about it because it's interesting, like right? But like, yeah. But I'm just saying purely, if I had an idea, oh, you do talk about it. Of course. It was okay. A big, it was a big like impact in, okay. in markets last year but i mean like do you guys use terms like like people yoloing or no, like no, apes no, no nothing no, like that. that's, that's what i'm saying like no, that's no, like no, the no, fucking no. you're a that. fucking retail yeah. trader stay in no, your fucking no. laptop you that, like people would look at you funny exactly people, <laughs> they would look at you funny it's not uh, part of the cool. lingo yeah it's not no yeah, no, no. It's not part i think of the like, finance i think language. the key thing is just like like the the trades that i'm pitching are more complex than just buying or selling well we'll keep it stock because people will understand more yeah they're more complex than just buying a stock or mm-hmm. selling a stock, for example, mm-hmm. or going short a stock. They're, the best way I can compare it to is like the really good trade out of 2020 and 2021 was people buying short dated options on meme stocks. Mm-hmm. And they, they basically, when you buy an option, you pay a premium and you like, especially a call option, you theoretically have unlimited amount of money that you can make Yeah, because right. it could, a company could go to infinity. Right. Yeah. It's not going to go there. It's not, it's not going to go there. But I'm using that that same kind of mentality exists for the products that I'm analyzing. Mm-hmm. Not not to the same extent because yeah. it's in foreign exchange. Like that's kind of the idea you want to sell them. Yeah, the fact yeah, that, yo, yeah. it could, but this well, is why and this at, is my reason at, behind we it. We look at trades that usually can make the client about 10 times the amount that they could lose. For example, okay. that certain clients only <clears throat> want to put on trades that have that like asymmetric opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of like, the way I understand it. And then going back to the normal day, like yeah. I'm working with my analyst who's really good at Python and we're combing through, like basically the bank runs on a, on a pricing sim- system, which utilizes um, like, it's, it's, it's a model. Yeah. And the model mm-hmm. is, it, it it's basically using a important concept, which is, is that the future contains a distribution of outcomes. 
uh, of any security. So we'll mm -hmm. go back to stock because it's, yeah. it's more interesting. But it's basically about. like you, your friend is the coder. You do know, do you know how to use uh, Python at all? Yeah, I know how to use it. Yeah, one, like but he's I better at it. Yeah, he writes okay, cool, the code. Cool. Yeah, so so basically, yeah. so like, and and you guys have created essentially like an algorithm, right? It's, like it's not necessarily an algorithm. algorithm. Okay, I think the thing like a... that's more, it's it's not that like a lot of people think about like algorithms as the only way to make money, but there's also value in the ability to just price like a broad set mm -hmm. of different trades. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so is going back to this thing is is that um, like options or or de derivatives, mm -hmm. they're using this kind of model which it, it incorporates what the mar like what the participants think can possibly happen mm -hmm. and it, it volatility i guess like people talk about the vix or or volatility right. of a certain thing like bitcoin's very volatile and Incredible like volatile, yeah. um coca-cola is not very volatile like they're gonna mm -hmm. sell fucking coke like it's, it's very like stable business mm -hmm. and so there exist opportunities in mispricings for what the market thinks could happen in the future relative to what will happen. Mm -hmm. And so back in 2021, the market completely mispriced how much GameStop stock could go up relative to what what like the options implied. Mm -hmm. And we're doing that, but we're doing it yeah. for foreign exchange. And just just real quick question. Um, have you seen the movie Margin Call? I have on Netflix. I actually heard some people talking about it, it. Right. lately. So the the reason the reason the reason why I brought it up is because you said you work you work with somebody that does Python, somebody that's a coder that that yeah. basically you guys have a, a formula, right? Essentially a formula, and you can you tell your computer, hey, like look up these certain things, give me these options. Yeah, it's doing all the thinking for you in a short amount of time. Correct, it's giving correct, you the information correct. as fast yeah, yeah, as possible. It's, it's automating, like yeah. it, automating, exactly, automating. Yeah. That that's that's the best yeah, thing yeah, to use. Yeah. It's, it's it's automating what the information you need. And the reason why I brought up um, the movie Margin Call was because like one of the one of the main characters had like found something in the system like through comparing them to like uh past re past um the recessions or depressions or yep. like all, from all this volatility that's like going up and down right and they're like yo we haven't hit numbers like this since like fucking like i don't know some 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 moment where some, yeah, some I mean, something happened an right yeah. what i do so yeah so yeah, and that's what i'm saying Sorry. like that's what i'm saying like yeah. it, it sounds yeah. a lot like yeah, you're yeah, those yeah. guys in that yeah, movie yeah, yeah. Or, or the other one like that people probably do know is, is the big short. The big short. The yeah. big short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christian Bale. As well. yeah. Yes. So, I mean, yes. that's another yeah. example of like analysts mm -hmm. that, that they understand something that no one understands. And because they understand it, they exactly. understand something that the people that are even using those things don't understand. And yeah. There's like an opportunity there. And okay. I'm not going to say I like found yeah. something like and that. You, but like, no, but you look for patterns essentially, yeah, yeah, right? Look yeah. For, look for things or use the data to, to broadly give statistical recommendations. Like okay. using statistics to quantify why something is a good or a bad investment. Okay, Take cool. That and you learned statistics in school, right? Mostly in school, yeah, or did you learn it more yeah, on the job? Yeah. I took statistics, but I don't really remember any of that shit. But right. like, okay, it's it's kind of like like people people like they think that things are like so complicated, but like they're simply like just identifying like mean, median, and like mode and shit like that, and like ninety fifth percentile and fifth percentile. Like that stuff is still important because it gives <laughs> you it gives you an understanding of like what can happen or when something is happening that the, there isn't a prediction for because certain th like things get crazier than than people expect and mm -hmm. so that's that's something that you can take away from data is sometimes the data is so condensed and so like definitive that people miss things that they don't think can happen like i'll give mm -hmm. you a good one this uh this like stable coin blew up like this week. So, okay. I, it is crazy that you brought that up because I was going to bring something similar to that up, yeah. something called the stock to flow model, which is basically what I, you know, oh, uh, yeah. the Bitcoin. Model. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard that shit, the stock to flow model. Right. And, and basically it's pretty accurate in its assessment. Right. Except the only things that the model cannot predict is um like the market sentiment or like disasters or like, you know, it, it can't, it can't predict these things. So that's why you'll see big dips in the chart when you compare them side by side right. as as the stock to flow model is basically taking the qua the the amount of bitcoin that will ever exist mm -hmm. yep. divided by the rate at which you can mine it at right and that's right. the same model that we use to predict the price of gold what do you define like uh, as a disaster as a disaster oh, like like, like a recession yeah, like, like, recession, or like or like or like, like covid or the, or the, like, yeah the covid or like the crypto right. boom and all yeah, that yeah. shit like people talking about it more like media hyping it up more and more right. and more like the stock the flow model doesn't calculate or analyze those things because mm -hmm. it cannot predict those things but what it can predict is we well it, it can follow that formula which is basically just divide the amount tell you where yep. price is going to go and like what the levels are exactly yeah and, and it's just like a like a rough indication of where and where what the does price that currently be. say about bitcoin 
Um, it's way off right now. It's way off. It's it way should off. be, yeah, I think it should be like at 180,000 or like at 100,000 right now. And right now it's at 30, 25. Okay, so 30,000, 30,000, 30, 31,000. 25 it's, to 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. And it hit the lowest, it hit 20, it 26,000. Yeah. Yeah. When, when uh, Luna and, and uh, also like, um, what's, what's the other stable coin? Yeah, when Luna, yeah. And then let's go back to stable coin. The tether. Shit. Tether, the was, tether. Uh, tether was kind of breaking the- Oh, like, tether. Yeah. tether. Tether is, I heard, is one of the biggest Ponzi if, schemes. If it's tether, about to blow. If tether blows oh, up, sure. Bitcoin's fucked. But anyways. <laughs> right, well, um, why do you say that though? Like, uh, you know, I'm really interested in- Oh, so two key things that we have to bring up. So one, I'll just hit quickly on Tether. Tether is the equivalent of dollar within the digital ecosystem. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so pe people don't want to take their their like investment outside of cryptocurrencies. And so they use these stable coins as like a proxy for being in the dollar, which is like yeah. safe, which is like what stock traders do, right? Exactly, like yeah. if I'm an investor, right. I think that the market's gonna crash. I put all my money in dollars. Mm -hmm. When crypto investors or like traders, they think that crypto is gonna crash, they put their money in a stable coin. Mm -hmm. And I think there's like weird, weird exactly. shit going on. With and the, the reason fund. why they put their money in stable coins, because a lot of these stable coins like Tether, USDT or like um, Luna specifically oh, will, yeah. are going to be like, yeah. they're, they're valued at like, yo, it's a dollar. It's always going to be a dollar. Yeah. It might, it might go down to nine to, to like, 99, do, cents. like 99 cents or some shit. Yeah. And then they'll keep like trading it and they'll make some, like somebody will put a lot of money on that penny essentially and they'll make a lot of money like um flash loaning or some shit like that flash trading but yeah there's weird shit going. yeah there's like a lot of weird shit that they can make money off of but um basically they promise uh like yo if you keep your money here on luna we'll give you 20 percent apy on the year right red which flag. is a huge red flag which is basically like yo you're straight up scamming pro yeah, it's, motherfuckers yeah. type it's shit Ponzi scheme. yeah and um and tether is essentially following those lines and yeah. tether's one has i think over billions or maybe even trillions inside it's, of it i think i read something it was like Ten, I don't quote me exactly, mm -hmm. but in the magnitude, I think it was like ten x larger than than USD. Th than USD. Okay, yeah. shit, Terra. that's fucking yeah. crazy. Okay. so if that blows up, what mm -hmm. coins? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's not a good thing for, for yeah. the system. And, and I personally think it's a ticking time bomb. But yeah, I agree. I agree. So okay, so there's a key thing that we have to hit on that we have to go back to mm -hmm. to understand the rise of cryptocurrencies and other shitty investments. Well, I'm not calling crypto shitty yet. Yeah, but <laughs> not yet. But not yet. there's a lot of speculative <laughs> shit that came out in the last yes. in since 2008. So a key event happened in 2008. If you want to get really in depth to it, go watch The Big Short. But basically in 2008, the financial system crashed mm -hmm. and it froze, like it broke. And the key thing was that the there were banks creating these mortgage-backed securities, giving strippers mm -hmm. eight houses, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the- The triple A double rated yeah, loans. Yeah. Was that like the ninja loans? Like no income, no yeah, job, yeah, 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 people yeah, were just yeah, getting yeah. A lot of bad, bad shit. Yep. Exactly. And so at the same time, you had interest rates hitting like the, like there were weird shit built into these loans where basically mm -hmm. you could get them really cheap at, in the in the front end like not pay that much in interest and then they like jump up at some point mm -hmm. um and when the when they jumped up like all these these mortgages like defaulted and and to make make matters worse like they repackaged these like mortgages, mortgages and then they into put like yeah into like fucking more like Another more, yeah, another yeah, yeah, mortgage, yeah, yeah. basically just, just another of, shit. Yeah, yeah they took another like shit. they took all the shitty ones and like put them all together and they repackaged it so people think that they're getting something diversified. Yeah. Um, but they were all shit. Yeah, they just called um, it okay. the same shit, different yeah, yeah. different name. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but we'll get past that because the, the key point isn't isn't the the like housing crisis. Yeah. Hmm. But the key thing is that a major financial player came into the market at that point, which is the Federal Reserve, and the mm -hmm. Federal Reserve did something that basically they'd never done before, which they fixed or saved. The financial system by buying bonds and, or like basically buying fixed income securities um and what they started they started with buying like government like u.s government bonds mm -hmm. um and basically this kind of like support to the market became like a bit of an addiction and what you see is is that from 2010 to 2009 to let's say 2017 steadily they bought more and more and more of these bonds federal reserve did is is they started buying bonds and and what's important about that is is that when they when they're buying these fixed income securities they're doing it with money they printed and it's mm -hmm. not it's not like they're in some factory and they had to get all the dollars like it's digital yeah but it's creating it's creating new money um and and this new money is being injected into the system through banks and through large financial like institutions like asset mm -hmm. like money managers and and once that 
money is created, it can go back into like investments. And, and the key thing is, is that our capitalist economy doesn't work without financing. Mm -hmm. Like we think, think of like, like you or I, it would be kind of tough if you couldn't meet certain payments with a, with a credit card. Mm -hmm. it, right. it's, so think about companies. They it would slow everything down. N not only no. slow everything okay. down, like certain, certain companies that we know today would cease to exist if they couldn't access public funding markets. Because you can't leverage? Because, because they're massive and they can't possibly meet all of their like like uh, liabilities or like obli finan like financial money obligations, obligations okay. without without drawing on some um like credit lines or for example okay. like without paying without physical cash yeah. so, okay 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 gotcha. um all right okay so but anyways they started doing this they did it all the way to 2017 um and then and then basically they they started like they, they tried to stop so they yeah. tried to basically sell those bonds back to the market and what happened when they did that was like a ton of different investments simultaneously were were falling in value. And so like back then, Bitcoin, I think, peaked at like 19K. It went all the way down to like 3K. <laughs> yes. Um, and S&P 500, I think, had fallen like 20% into, into um, what was like December of, of 2018. And then like at that time, it was kind of interesting because like Trump was basically... Uh, pressuring the Federal Reserve to like stop. They're, they were focusing on the interest rate portion of it. They were mm -hmm. saying, oh, you need to cut rates. You need to stop talking about hiking rates, whatever. But the key thing that happened there was they made a complete U-turn on their behavior in in buying or, or selling these fixed income securities. Okay. Um, and so they stopped uh, what basically what they were doing. They stopped they selling. Stopped they selling these bonds. And then COVID hit. And the amount of fixed income buying that they did during COVID was the most massive undertaking that had ever occurred. Heard ever, yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. it was massive. And basically what that did was, you have to think about, they, were, they weren't just buying US government bonds then. First, they were buying a lot of them, but they were buying other stuff too. So they bought, at its peak, up to 25% of the like United States government bond Bonds. market. They were buying mortgage backed securities, which are now like issued through uh, like a government entity called like Fannie Mae. Fannie Fannie Mae. Mac. Yeah. Yep. And they were even buying corporate bonds, like Apple's bonds, for example, through an ETF. Um, and what this does is it starts making like traditional investments, like not make sense to own. And so I'll give you an example. US treasuries, like 10 year, 30 year treasuries, were yielding like 1%. And, okay. and it, like money managers, their job is to not, like if you tell someone you're gonna make them 1%, they're gonna tell stupid, you go yeah. get fucked. 3% is like ideal, right? Still shit, right. Still shit. Exactly. Oh, okay, and so- SMP beats that. No, okay, like yeah, the normal- I, I thought 3% was a good deal. <laughs> no, uh, it is on a fixed income security, but if yeah. you're a money manager, like you're, you're usually telling someone that, like they usually take like two and 20, which is like 2% of the assets under management. So mm -hmm. 2% of what they gave you to invest yeah. mm -hmm. and 20% of the returns. So these guys are trying to make 20, 30%, like they're trying to make serious amounts of money. Um, and so what happened is because of what the Federal Reserve did, all of those investment like institutions start investing in riskier assets. And so that starts with allocating more money to stocks. And now like Apple and, and like these big, I would call them relatively safe tech companies that have businesses that can kind of withstand anything. Mm -hmm. Like nobody's not going to buy Apple yeah. iPhones. But they're overinflated. They start becoming expensive. Like these companies start trading at the highest like Amazon, price. Amazon, Apple, yeah. and Tesla. So, so what do people start doing? They start buying like just shit companies, like companies that have no potential to like ever make money. Mm -hmm. um, and even those companies get expensive. So you start seeing like, other types of like really garbage stuff going out there, like like the SPACs. Like, like GameStop of, and like SPACs. I mean, GameStop has a real business. I'm talking like worse than that, like SPACs. Oh, like, like these companies that made up their financial yeah. projections, they weren't fucking ever gonna hit it. Crypto, Nicola. crypto is definitely okay, part crypto, of, okay, it's crypto. definitely part of the more like pushing into riskier accesses of the financial Vassets, markets. Okay, cool. Um, Dogecoin? Yeah. Oh God. Dogecoin. Dog money, um, baby. Dog coin. <laughs> and, then, and then also like pushing into more like leveraged, like option, ba like risk, basically anywhere that risk mm -hmm. existed, um, money was flowing there. And the la last mm -hmm. one I, I I forgot to say, but this is like v like private investment. So like all of those 
funding of like all the fucking grocery store, or like grocery delivery businesses in New York City or like oh, any, yeah. any. Oh, yeah. Like crazy evaluations. There were like, oh, like, like, these, a, like a grocery was like money a, yeah. was these like a billion dollars yeah. or some shit. One deli, one deli was was fucking valued yeah. at that. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I was like, what the fuck? That was probably some other sh- shady shit. Yeah, that was like that's definitely some that fucking definitely wild, some shady, shady wandering shit. Um, but yeah, okay, so like that's the huge like background that we need to start with to talk about anything that has like happened over the last like three or four three years. weeks. Okay. Oh, um, three or four. Okay. Well, like three or four. Like for example, like people started talking about investments because things- everybody was home. Or yeah, that. I think but even a little before that, like right when the pandemic hit, yeah. like now you have Robin Hood and now everything crashed and everything yeah. just shot up yeah, like yeah. in the span of a few weeks. So everyone's like, you got all these new traders that are like, dude, all you got to do is put money into this yeah. and you make money back. Yeah. It's easy. Mm-hmm. You know? NFTs too. I forgot that one. Oh, there NFTs. We can talk about, we can talk about NFTs too. Yeah. Um, soon. <laughs> Any more points you want to make on the on the last three years? I'm I'm basically saying is is that this access of of like money in the system that couldn't buy traditional investments because mm-hmm. the returns were expected to be too low created what is obvious now a bubble in in things that like should never have gotten so expensive mm. um and okay. and that's really key to understand because what happened in the last we'll call it since November but it's really been happening since like early 2021 has been the reversal of of that kind of like bubble like oh, since 2021 we've been reversing that bubble yeah exactly yeah. Okay. we have been okay like like for example like a lot of these SPACs that like went public at ten dollars and then hit like crazy like 30 40 50 some 100 mm-hmm. are now trading at like one or two dollars right. or like peloton oh. hit like some stupid yeah. number. like lucid yeah um peloton yeah, yeah i remember peloton like uh, even even yeah. like even companies that I respect, like but Netflix. traded way too expensive, like Coinbase, Nano, Uber, Airbnb, mm-hmm. WeWork, Netflix. Well, yeah, Netflix. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Netflix. For example, like yeah. all of these things that were <gasps> extremely beneficial to society, but didn't follow the main rule of of being a company, which is make money. Mm. These companies didn't make money, and what they what they all they had to do to get more investment was show that more people were like they just had to show top line growth. Hey, we're making more money. And or they failed to meet that? Or they it, failed? It wasn't even that. They failed to show it? During the entire time that they were growing their revenues, the, the stock was going up because mm-hmm. it was under the assumption that one day they would have so many customers and they'd just be able to raise the price and then make a ton of money. But that was never the case because mm-hmm. when you offer something that's nice that people want to use, but you offer it so cheap, then there are going to be inherent like loss of customers by raising the price. Because that's just the laws of supply and demand, right? Mm-hmm. right As you right. continue to, to raise the price, the price right. people are less drop people off. are able to use the service. I mean, that's what happened with Netflix. So like it started off at like, what, seven or eight bucks. And then like now they're at like, what, 15 And during that time, like Netflix yeah. continued to grow at a rapid pace. Like they, they, they have some extremely mm-hmm. amazing amount of users. But yeah. they burn all of their like revenue, all of the revenue that they make from that on their production costs. Yeah, because they, yeah, they have high quality production. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't fuck around with that. And, and the thing is, that, the, the, content, the thing is, they make ha- all of their own content. Yeah, it's not like Disney mm-hmm. where they can fucking milk Star Wars. It's not like Hulu where they can use partnerships with like Paramount Studios or yeah. whatever or ABC. Mm-hmm. Or, like a lot of these businesses, mm-hmm. they aren't trying to get every customer. They're just trying to make money, but yeah. they didn't get as much attention because they weren't seeing massive revenue growth. Yeah, and, and that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna be pretty much say that at, at what point does Netflix peak in like subscription? Like, can they really get any has. more? Was that? I think, I think it has. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Rate's that's why it's, yeah. they have a huge penetration rate of of subscribers, and all they can do now is just try not to lose them while raising the price. While raising the price, it's exactly. Tough because yeah. at the same point, you have other alternatives. We've now. got inflation right now. That's um kind of lo- like you know rapidly. Yeah, rapidly I mean, yeah, up. exactly. You have people. Being, the government's kind of losing track of yeah, it a little well, bit. And then the, or we, we, or we, at least we've lost faith in um, Jerome Powell, the guy basically, you know, running the security. Well, I, I just feel like part of security, it is because of the, the fact that the Fed wants to increase interest rates. Like, I not, mean, and they, and they like, have to. Yeah. And they have to, to, right. slow, because, to slow down inflation, you, right? right? To taper down. You have to think about but what I just... People ex- stop buying as much, you know? People stop yeah. taking out leverage and borrowing money. Yeah, yeah. You, have to, you have to think about what I just talked about, about what the Federal Reserve did. Exactly, yeah. 
And you have to pair it with the fact that everyone got stimulus checks in mm-hmm. in 2021 and, and end of 2020. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and uh, the unemployment. Yeah, all right. exactly. Yeah. And all of that, all like it was a lethal combination of institu- institutions being greedy at the same time that retail was being greedy. Mm-hmm. And it created it created an unfortunate effect for a lot of people who joined investing for the first time. And I was going to say that you have all these new buyers coming in and, and they're not really sure what, the, what to do, but they got all this money and they're just like, fuck it, I'm going to throw it in. And that created yeah. it created the golden era of charlatans, of people that don't know anything but like, talk a good game and can mm-hmm. sell people on fucking whatever cryptocurrency nfts amc calls whatever the beginning of wall street bets yeah the yeah, retail man. trade I mean, those, like yeah. i'm not gonna lie if it's really interesting because it's like it's a, like a bifurcate i have a bifurcated opinion about it because there's people that are just like trying to squeeze the stock which it's like manipulation but like it doesn't sound like it because it's like a bunch of people that like don't have an edge like if, yeah. if a bunch of hedge funds got together and they're like oh we're all gonna like buy the stock which they do at the same they do definitely they do sure. um but if they got caught doing that they would definitely like go mm-hmm. to jail for it but they, they no 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 they they, they no, get it, they get caught and they pay a fine that they can afford and then they're it depends good what they, and they do it again for. i mean dude there, there are examples of, of hedge fund like there's always a fall guy right mm-hmm. like of course there are people getting away with shit yeah um there's always like a scapegoat that yeah, like yeah, someone has to take yeah. the there are fall people that, that then, yeah but, but, but i, I yeah. think the penalties aren't as severe like the oh, penalties yeah, are like elon you're going to do like yeah. two or elon three years man, manipulated markets and like Dodge coin. i mean elon must definitely, manipulated, elon must definitely no, he manipulated his yeah. own stock price by saying they had a, a deal and they didn't and he, oh with the twitter yeah with the twitter right i i, I just heard about this i, I don't know yeah. much about yeah. what's going on beyond after he's no but even going back to when he said tesla had a deal to be taken private at like 4 2069 or some shit like Oh. He he made something. He released something which is on Twitter. Like yeah, he released it on Twitter, which is like price sensitive information. Like the market moved when he said that, but it wasn't actually true. Yeah, and he got a slap on the wrist. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah I think, like <laughs> removed him from board or whatever. Like whatever he did, he still has the same amount of power. That's so funny. He can really uh, just and, tweet whatever. And when he, <laughs> I mean, I feel like Donald Trump was doing that. Donald Trump was, yeah, but he's a politician. Like, he's untouchable. Gotcha. He's different. <laughs> yeah, he, he, forget, he, he can forgive yeah. himself. Right. Yeah. You're definitely untouchable when you're a politician because they write their own rules that they'd have to enforce them themselves. Why would you Damn. enforce rule against yourself that like penalty like penalty penalizes, penalizes you? Yeah. Yeah, nobody's mm-hmm. gonna do that. Damn, that's fucking crazy. Shit, become a politician. So would you say Wall Street is just incredibly fucking like they just have the edge and they're like corrupt in that sense where they they I, mean, I think I think the edge is access to better technology, better, better information, information, and mm-hmm. more experience. Right, like mm. people that are on Wall Street have traded through bear and bull markets, um, and so so we don't stand. So the retail trader stands zero chance. No, I don't think that's they true don't. either. Oh, they I don't, don't think that's okay. true either. I think that you have to understand what game you're playing. Right, like mm-hmm. when you sit down at the black blackjack table or like poker you're, table, yeah. you're the chump. Like <laughs> who's the chump? <laughs> you, you like well, no, yeah, no, no, no. I get that. Lose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I get losing that. Losing on the casino. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, like everyone is that. Place. Everybody's. Yeah. I mean, we play poker here. <laughs> yeah, and I definitely lost. <laughs> and I've lost too. I've lost. Too. And the yeah. same thing is true to the person who treats the stock market or investing like a casino, mm-hmm. expecting quick profits and making trades in which if it goes wrong for them, they'll lose all their money. Mm-hmm. But you're better off if you sit in a casino, if you sit at a poker table, which, a bu- which you're experienced at and they're unexperienced, but they have a lot of money and you take advantage of that, of that fact. I mean, you, I mean, what happened? You're to, paying a skill based. What happened game. to Melvin Capital was was truly amazing. Like the Bernie Madoff. No, no, no. Oh, no Melvin no. Capital Melvin was Capital the ones was... that got blown up short in GameStop, and they were really stupid for doing. Oh that. yes, yeah. yes, yes. They Sorry, were really no. stupid yes. for doing that yes, because yes, yes. the thing is that GameStop had enough cash on their balance sheet to roughly explain the value of the stock, and they had made. I think there's like some interesting like background yeah. like podcasts on on this, but basically they had made like ninety percent on shorting GameStop. And they were greedy. The same, the next thing that is really important about finance and like, I'm no expert on it, but it's like psychology and like behavioral, um, like science. patterns or like, yeah, yeah, behavioral science, science yeah. whatever. That stuff is extremely important. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, because that, it can get anyone. It doesn't that, matter how smart you are. A lot of smart people have, have, yeah. have failed too. But the thing is that some institutions play a smarter game. Is that different? That, like people were just used to winning 
like when people started investing with like the PPP loan money, their stimulus checks. I mean, people dude, were just used to. Dave like, Portnoy getting, was like, taking like stock tickers out of a fucking Scrabble bag. <laughs> yeah, people were used people, to. People they're, they're, and now, now like stocks now, just now go now up. And now, yeah. and now wait, 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 just real yeah. quick. I want, I want, I want, I want to yes. tell you. I don't know if you watch this video, but there's this kid called Michael Reeves. He's like this fucking programming geek or whatever. He's yeah. really good at coding like computers and shit. And um, he basically created a video recently, like I think this last month where he gave his goldfish $50,000 and he would basically like analyze, he'd put a camera and he, and any, and he would track the goldfish, right? Whatever side it was on, that's the stock it would buy. And he did that for a span over six months. And then he got another algorithm um, that he set up with Wall Street and he compared them side by side over six months over like the people like buying, like hyping up certain stocks or whatever. Okay. And the goldfish performed better. Like literally the goldfish performed better than the fucking- I think that's a key thing is, is like, one, what does he define as Wall Street? Because, because so I'll, I'll, really, I'll explain to you. Yeah, so what, what he did, what he did with uh, Wall Street bets was he basically went on the forums page uh-huh. on Wall Street bets when you post or whatever, you get a certain like diamond or like yeah, number yeah. or whatever that like goes up that mm-hmm. makes you a creditor, like uh, gives you credentials essentially. Yep. He took a bunch of those people and then and then um, he would go through the forums and it would be positive, either positive sentiment or negative sentiment. It was basically. Yeah his algorithm of tracking market sentiment, which is essentially like psychology, right? right. Like, yo, are we greedy or are we fucking, are, are we FOMOing or are we fudding, right? Are yep. we fear, yep. un- uncertainty and doubt or are we fear of missing out, right? So yep. positive or negative, yeah, right? Yeah, like the greed, fear index. Yeah, the, they, they like just like the greed, fear index, right? So, and then basically it would track like that and it would, and people would buy or like hype, hype certain stocks up. And then he used that to track, he, he used that as he created like a tracking system that's how he tracked that. And then he tracked his goldfish and then he created a portfolio, two separate portfolios. He gave them to a financial YouTuber guy who's like good at making money off this yeah. stuff. Um, his name is great from Stefan. I don't know if you know who he is, no. but he, he, he got famous over like the last five years, like just talking about real estate and a bunch of shit sure. and, and a bunch of like stocks. But he, his thing is like very like old school mentality, like Warren Buffett type shit. Like, gotcha. yo, just dollar cost average down over time. That's the best way. SPX, SP 500, whatever. Like that's, that's, that's the proven me. way. 90% buy chance you're going to make your money. Yeah. And then like buy real estate and do the Burr method or whatever. So this guy, Michael Reeves, this kid who doesn't know a lot about investing and he's just making this video yeah. to like show the culture that we're in today. And he gave it to this guy and it was guys like, oh yeah. Like the, he not, not knowing that it was a goldfish who tracked it. Yeah. And he chose the goldfish portfolio type shit. And like, that's the kind of environment that we've created in the last two years. Yeah. And right. this is also key. Like, it's not like these things are new. The actual individual investor who's making decisions like emotionally mm-hmm. is going to be more likely to buy at the bad time and sell at the bad exactly. time. And right now we have a flood of new beginners right, who, who are, don't know how to yeah. handle their emotion. They're not good right, poker right. players, bro. They're they only, fold. They're only like good at winning during like, a great bull run yeah, that yeah, we yeah, just yeah, had yeah. like in 2020 exactly. or 2020. Well, it's, it's kind of like going back to sitting down at the casino is like you find you win a couple hands at the beginning and mm-hmm. you're up and you're like, yeah. oh, I'm good at this. I'm gonna keep playing. By the end you leave and you have no money. It's the same thing. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like people don't know, yeah. how to, they don't know when to stand up and they extrapolate that what happened in the past is gonna happen in the future. future. Yes. And a lot of, a lot of people's mentality on what's going to happen is is influenced by that and they don't really like play devil's advocate to themselves so would you say like the main point of your real job is to really just really genuinely be curious and always try to be curious and always looking for new opportunities and and that kind of skill takes such a big stress on you like like a a big mental stress factor and essentially like will you be ineffective at a certain point like is this like a long-lasting career like no way no no way (laughs) um yeah, I mean, I, I don't like I don't really take myself too seriously, mm-hmm. but like you, you're right, it is stressful because the people that you're talking to have like a very like straight to the point and they're very like quick to dismiss people who like say stupid things or like don't sound smart. Mm-hmm. So like I agree, like it is stressful. And like sometimes I've been thinking about something all day and I'm fried by the end of the day. I'm like, I don't even want to be talking to anyone mm-hmm. because like I, I don't have the processing ability that I have when I came in in the morning. Mm-hmm. But I think like what, what keeps me going is is that I enjoy the challenge of understanding things that people are talking about and being able to synthesize something complex and make it conversational. Mm. I think I think like okay. a lot of people overlook that aspect. They understand something they that maybe other people don't understand it, 
but they don't know how to like communicate it yeah exactly properly. Yeah, yeah you're very concise with your words i'm yeah. like i mean it, just in this part podcast thus far like you just show yeah that. No, you're, you're so passionate. well thought out yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very quiet I'm, because i'm a learner myself i'm learning yeah i'm yeah, learning yeah, a lot i'm like, learning just a hearing lot you speak it's just, you a have lot. a passion but it, it's, for what you do it's like a key thing because like like there can like things are extremely complex nothing is like black and white exactly. and a lot of people's mentality is to make things black and white mm -hmm. um and the reason for that is like you can always have the strongest opinion if you're like you're a like single oriented person like you like the people that only think like bitcoin is the best investment or the people like it's a good story to tell right like mm -hmm. oh bitcoin's but like michael yeah. saylor the narrative the yeah, narrative michael is saylor. so like, great this dude yeah. is like a lunatic about bitcoin like oh fucking sell your house like take out loans and all this shit like it's kind of scary what he did to his company by the way <laughs> to like 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 take out debt that's backed by bitcoin like that that's kind of scary mm -hmm. um but these people that get married to only thinking one way like it's a ticking time bomb or Kathy Wood. She got married to only buying growth companies that are innovating for the changing the future. Changing the future. And she didn't give a fuck about if they're ever going to make a, make money. And like her fund got destroyed this year. And oh, like, this year. Yeah, this yeah. year. But last yeah. year she was being no, 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 praised. It was the best one. The, it was the best thank yeah. God, yeah. Nessie, yeah. Kathy right. Wood. If, if she was a dynamic thinker and mm -hmm. able to like accept different ways of thinking, she could have been an absolute legend. Imagine yeah. if she didn't lose all that money. Well, uh, uh, let's say this. Right now, she's down. But five years, ten years from now, are we going to be praising her again? But who? But but that's the thing is. Yeah. Is who knows, right? Like maybe she. Like maybe that there is an idea behind. Like you don't want to pick a company that's going to suck, right? Mm -hmm. Like don't don't pick something that is yeah. going to fail. Like, everyone mm. wants to pick the best stocks, and and yeah. the best stocks means the companies that are going to create something that mm. is so useful to society that yeah. like we didn't know we needed it today but we're, we're gonna know we, we need, need it tomorrow. tomorrow yeah so like yeah. that in concept is really important yeah but and, and that's what kathy would did so I, would yeah. you say she's really wrong or would you say the market just hasn't is just acting in a almost she, she paid too well she maybe she didn't pay too much when she put on these trades but she paid premium no 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 oh, it's no. not premium but she she was so confident in her strategy that she completely neglected the importance of one profitability and two valuation. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. Say okay. I love a company like I love Playboy. This is this is like a Let's company go. I really believe in. Yeah. Um, but there's a certain price at which Playboy would no longer be a good investment. Mm -hmm. What price is that? Not where we are today. It's a good yeah. investment today. <laughs> oh, no, right. uh, okay. I guess we'll get into but, that. Uh, like, OK, like <laughs> if Playboy was a $10 billion market cap, it would be a stupid sell. You should definitely sell the stock. And, and at ten billion market cap, how does that reflect the stock price? Um, fuck. Just for the I viewers. Mean, it's, yeah, it's like four hundred million today at like nine dollars. So like, that's fucking like twenty x where we are now. So like twenty x nine times twenty. So I yeah. can't do math. In my head, can, but, like one eighty. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, something, uh, yeah, okay. something like that. <laughs> no, one eighty, two fifty, like somewhere up in the hundreds, two hundreds. Like it, especially now, based on like what they've accomplished, it would be way too expensive. Mm -hmm. um but under kathy wood's mentality her mentality was that and when her stocks went up she would say oh now they're gonna go up another 10 times like she did that shit with tesla mm -hmm. she had like a model and like bro she was dead right like tesla reached that stock price mm -hmm. you know what she did she put in her model like oh they're gonna make like five million on like insurance or five billion on insurance and like 10 billion on like robo yes, taxis i saw yeah. that it's like basically re tesla's like gonna reach an evaluation of three thousand yeah, yeah, dollars yeah. within the next four or five years something yeah. like that right she just added a bunch That's of stuff that like doesn't yeah. exist and mm -hmm. and maybe one day it does exist and but it does it <laughs> maybe one day it does exist yeah. but how do you like because it's irresponsible it's irresponsible to make financial project projections of that magnitude with something that doesn't exist yet but the question is do we i guess my question would be like do we think the government is going to print more money and the same thing that we're going through now is going to happen again in the next five to 10 years. Uh, they probably will. They I mean, probably it's, will, right? It's always a bubble. Every, that's what I'm saying. What's the business it, cycle? It always like, it's a cycle. Years, 10 years. It's a cycle. Yeah, and and, and the thing is that what's stopping the government from printing money? Nothing right now. They can do it whenever they no, want. No, but they're not going to do it right now. And no, not, not not right now, but I mean like right. in the next, in the future, they're, they're going to keep doing yeah, that. They, it's it's going to be a cycle. But until, here's the problem. And then the Bitcoin, the, the, the whole thing is that essentially all this will fucking come crashing down, burning down, and Bitcoin will be like the fucking Messiah or the Savior. I mean, you have to understand yeah, is through. Who says that though? What? I mean, like who's, well, who's that, saying that? Well, that, that, like, that's... Who's they? It sounds like the zero, Bitcoin, the like Bitcoin community, yeah. the Bitcoin community, the oh, people God. who really okay. fucking oh, who really oh, believe right. in like Bitcoin. They're like, see, yo, like this see, is the, the savior. This are, is. The, are are this you the part answer. of that Bitcoin community? Or no, I'm more. I'm I'm I'm, I'm more of like I'm more I'm my 
you're sympathetic to what they're saying no not even sympathetic i understand what i understand what they're saying it's coming from uh uh the narrative the narrative of what do you believe it no i mean not because i don't i don't really understand i guess how money like really really works like do i really think the dollar is gonna bust and go to zero like maybe eventually like when the next hundred yeah, years that, maybe that, that would have to be like you know the demise saying? of the united but states but do i think bitcoin is going to take over the dot no i not i don't believe that well, but do so i think bitcoin is going to gonna hit a hundred thousand within the next 10 years like i think that's likely i think that's possible yeah. okay so you know here's a key thing that we need to talk about mm-hmm. what 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 would people do if bitcoin disappeared tomorrow like how would their lives change what do you mean how would their lives change like like they just lose a bunch of money. No, no, like ignore that. Money. Okay, it's ignore that. Okay, okay. Not, it's not. About right. loot, like, I think I could answer this. It wouldn't change much. Yeah. It, the, 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 and what he's trying to get at, I see where you're trying to get at. It's like it doesn't have that big of an impact on the world. But it does. Like for example, if no, if, no, if no, they I'm, took away cars like today, they took away my car, everyone's cars. Okay. Like that has a, a pretty big impact on the world. But if you take Bitcoin away right now, how much of an impact does that create in the world? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Okay. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I think there would be like some some big problems no, that would but arise ignore, from that. Okay, ignore people but, losing money. I'm not okay. talking like a terror t- event. I'm just talking about purely like everything, okay, okay. especially prior to cryptocurrency, everything that existed had a purpose. Mm-hmm. And maybe that purpose ended up not achieving what it Like a service or good, like a service exactly. or good or product or every, whatever. Like yeah. Every you know single like investment prior to that was was some, it was linked by some ba- like, like utility. We'll use the word utility. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bitcoin doesn't really have that. And 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 also, okay. second to that, there's nobody that really manages, like, there's no one that's taking Bitcoin and trying to establish its like purpose. And so, for example, if you have U- if you have U.S. dollar, it's a means of exchange. Yes. If you have any currency, right? Any it's currency now, it's a means of exchange. You can get things that you need to survive by using it. You mm-hmm. can't you. You can kind of do it with Bitcoin. I know some people tried to do it, but mm-hmm. but relatively speaking, the average person given a ton of Bitcoin would it would be like toilet paper to them. I mean, I, right right now, yeah, right now, right now in today's thing, like yeah, if, yeah. if, Bit, if Bitcoin yeah. were to were to be gone tomorrow, like physically, you have no physical aspect of this of this or whatever, right? Like yeah. you're not you're not really losing anything. But physically. everyone's just using Bitcoin to speculate right now. Yes, correct. Yeah, for sure. And, and that's not a productive. Like, and where do you get the hundred thousand dollar like price? Yeah, you know me, what I mean, like, where do you get that from? Let, let me let me get to that. So, like, I think the the biggest utility. You said that things that I guess like businesses or companies they need a utility, right? They need to provide something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing that that Bitcoin does provide is the blockchain, right? It's a and set, I agree. Blockchain technology. You know what I'm saying? Blockchain technology is very interesting. And, and we're still finding ways to use this, this technology in today's business. And especially, you know, and 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 I want to push on to like NFTs and things like that. Because NFTs, there are util there are like certain NFTs that, that can hold utilities or you can or you can essentially build a business yeah. through the blockchain with an NFT, if right? If you own a board ape, yeah. you have yeah. the ability to receive a hundred thousand dollars per year in in like merchandising yeah so but, for, for example those guys they created bored and hungry like burger mm-hmm. chain yeah with yep. with uh because they own a board ape yeah so i'm with you i'm yeah. actually with so yeah so it's like so it's like that's that's the actual utility but that's, that's providing not, but that's not bitcoin right now what but it's not bitcoin and the thing is no that- no so 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 now now my other part my my other part the second the second part because that's just one of the things that we're kind of starting to see okay. right now blockchain technology the other yeah and mm-hmm. the thing about blockchain technology is basically that it's peer-to-peer lending right where it's basically like yo like yeah, we're, yeah. we're we're doing yeah. a transaction there's no intermediary that like yes no yeah yeah and there's and there's a third a, party you don't, need to use yeah. a, right, right. you don't need to use a normal institution to process your exchange exactly yeah. right there's a there's a computer out there that's solving an algorithm to process our transaction right so like that in itself kind of solves a major problem in the entire sector of just like centralized banking, right? Because if the bank goes bust, then they can't. Exactly, right. So, so those are just the two main like things that are keeping Bitcoin alive and that I think that will keep Bitcoin going for like a long time. I don't know how long, right? And I wouldn't say forever. I'm just saying for like a, a, a substantial amount of time, at the very least 10 years. That's why I'm saying possible, right? Okay. Like 10 years, like it's a, it's a big possibility. Now, the thing that we want to see for Bitcoin to get to a hundred to a hundred thousand dollars, I have I have like five five main things that like just very general things that people could look out for, right? And these this is not again this is not financial advice. This is just things that I think are 
this are is, possible and, and realistic. This is the research that you've done that have led you to this hundred thousand. Yeah, I want to know. Well, no, no, my my my, the, the, my real research is pre, is pretty much the fucking the stock to flow model. That that that's one of that's one of the biggest reasons. Um, the science to look out for would be like obviously watching the Federal Reserve, seeing how how they're acting right now. Because right now, the market crypto market is correlated to the stock market. Right when right. the market goes down, because the crypto goes down. That goes back to my point: is institutions yep. got into Bitcoin exactly because all of the other investments were getting exactly. too expensive. And and institutions staying in Bitcoin, and even more institutions joining in coin. Right, Bitcoin. Sorry, mm -hmm. Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Okay. That's gonna propel it to go up. So. Another thing would be look at the trading volumes, right? Look at the indicators, look at the cap capitulations, right? Look at for mass sell-offs and shit like that. That that's another indicator on like where the trajectory is going to be headed. Um, another one was basically like follow the smart money, right? Like look at what Apple's doing, look at what Tesla's doing, and basically how because once they make a move and they start playing around with blockchain technology or utilizing this this you know. Bitcoin, that's going to create mass adoption. That's going to trigger mass adoption where more people are going to start utilizing utilizing and using it in the real world, right? And it's going to have more of a value in time, right? Now, that mass adoption and following the smart money, it's it's very, that's what's really going to bring um, the price up to 100,000 more than likely. Like that's, that's, that's nice my like number. possible but, prediction, but, but, right? And that's what, very general. Like, that's very general. What's, what's, what's it's not very specific. Like 100,000, 400K, like, like, how yeah. do I, how do, how do we know that when I got to the around number? Yeah. So when right, you, so. yeah, no. So when you, when you follow it, there are, um, there, fuck bro. I don't know how to explain it to you, but there's other, 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 like this is a worldwide, like international kind of like trade thing. So it's like, there's more um companies like around the world that are just gonna start adopting it like they're gonna start picking up like one of the examples that is actually that's actually being used today which is crazy because this is recent is the fact that they're starting to do um for um 401ks retirement funds they're starting to back it up with bitcoin right so you can now get a bitcoin from i think one of the largest fidelity fidelity yes fidelity yeah so you know about this right and they have it like 11.4 trillion dollars i read a lot they're the number one um Came prepared i read a lot of bullshit what? on twitter well, well, yeah, yeah, that, that, and that's what I'm saying. Like, that's that's one of the things that I I just found this out really like today, and I'm like, oh shit, like that's that is a big turning point because right. now that's creating a, another market, another niche market of people who want to um like cash, what is it, dollar cost average down, right? And it's like, yo, like let me just put my money into Bitcoin and as as my retirement fund or whatever, and whatever happens when I'm 50 or 40 or 60, like hopefully I can take that money out tax free type shit. So now you're creating another narrative, you're creating another market and people are going to start pushing this into it. Institutions can start picking it up. You see a lot of creators pushing that out now, yeah. like they're getting deals, affiliate links and shit like that. So that's that yeah. like all, all these small little things, you know, people are going to keep being creative. That's how innovation is pushed, right? When things go down, people are like, yo, how, how can we solve more problems? How can, how, how can we use what we have now and put money into creating something different? And how can we get more people to use it? Right? What's the story? What's the why? Right. So like that's that's my reasoning as why I think like in the next 10 years, it's it's I think it's likely that Bitcoin could hit 100,000 and 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 mass market manipulation is also a real thing. Right. Well, I mean, there's no regulation in Bitcoin. So, yeah, it's fine. Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, so that's why I'm like, yo, like they, they, they could pump it up and then it could just pump down like whatever. Okay, but I it think could hit it. I think so many factors that could hit it. I think, think, I think, could hit it. I think there's two. I mean, listen, anything can happen and like people could be proven right for the right reasons or mm -hmm. proven right for the wrong, the wrong reasons. reasons. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. A lot of people are like, people will claim victory before, like, before the bell, right? Mm -hmm. Like investing is an, an infinite thing. Like your entire life until you cash out and go to whatever, maybe it'll be Bitcoin since dollars gonna fall apart. But <laughs> until you like cash the trade or like complete yeah. whatever investment you made, mm -hmm. like like you're, you're still on the hook for being wrong. But a lot of people will claim like to, this is just a side point. Like, mm -hmm. just just to say is like thing like everything continues to evolve. And there's and there's two I think key points to consider. One, cryptocurrency. I think the demand like any price of anything out there is is merely just supply and demand. And and those things obviously are demand can be cr created through perception through narrative and mm -hmm. like all those, those things are important. But those things are obviously very volatile, right? People's sentiment is extremely like um it, the, the pendulum it swings mm -hmm. quite significantly it's like 2017 so, yeah went, okay, up, so, went down 90 yeah, yeah, percent yeah, exactly yeah. and so i think like the key thing is like bitcoin in, in the public's eye has been probably around like five years mm -hmm. and you think about technologies which existed and 
then ceased to exist after 2000, which is the tech bubble. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, I think there's a key point to be made, which is not all of these things which people have been sold on will exist through the, and I, like, I hate these people that are like, I'm a doomsday recession caller, I know it's yeah. gonna happen. <laughs> but if the Federal Reserve decides to follow its mandate and fight inflation and raise rates and reduce their balance sheet, you could probably kill, like it could end up killing Bitcoin because there could be institutions which were part of the rise in the price that now need to take more, like they now need to be much more like um, safer with their capital. They need to they need to allocate to assets that aren't as volatile. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason for that is because institutions, their motivation is they're answerable to their whoever they took the money from. And if they're losing a lot of money, um, they're going to make changes. And so that, I mean, this is a key thing is, is that. Do if, you think that a lot of them will just kind of jump into Bitcoin at some point in a cryptocurrency? But I think that that's already happened. I think the key thing is that anybody that would like Paul Tudor Jones. Do you think the bubble cause, happened cause, with Bitcoin? Like, I'm not, that like, yeah. to say? Are you trying to compare it to a bubble or like, I just want to know where you're, where you're coming from. I mean, it was down, it's down 50%. It's down 50%. So like you so could definitely, definitely and, and there's yeah, other, okay. there's a dude, right. Dogecoin's down like 90%. Mm -hmm. So there was definitely a bubble in cryptocurrency. Like, I don't think it's really like something that- No, no, I, I, for sure. Definitely can't, yeah. bubbles, yes. You definitely Absolutely. can't like yeah. argue against it. Like there was this like stupid shit that yeah. was getting a lot yeah. like, and- But just like the market, like the tech market, Yeah, yeah, right? agreed, right. agreed. Spacs, like, fucking SPACs are down yeah. like, like, like it's not, it's not unique to cryptocurrency, but mm -hmm. listen, Oil and gas companies had a really good year so far this year and and yeah. Target and Walmart and Coca-Cola. And so what I'm saying is, is that people expect that risky assets will quickly become back in favor because that's all that, that that's all that they're used to. Yeah. And I'm saying is, is that how like how much resolve will people that have believed in Bitcoin, how much will they have if they're no longer able to live the lives that they were able to live over the last five years? So that's one major factor that I think that is a bigger risk to this 100K price target or, or just a major upside. Cause mm -hmm. like I, I hear a lot of people that mm -hmm. think Bitcoin is gonna go up a lot. Yeah, but well, well, just, just, just one thing real quick, yeah. just real quick. In the last two years, you work with a lot of, you have a lot of clients that are hedge fund managers, right? Have any yeah. of them asked at all about cryptocurrency? Are they curious? No, Do they yeah, wanna I jump mean, into our, it? Or are like, they just like completely deterrent? No, one of our traders writes a note on cryptocurrency. Like there's clearly demand there. Oh, there's, de there's definitely demand. Yeah. Do you see we in the next- We don't offer it as a bank. We don't trade, but there are yeah. legitimate institutions that now offer like exchange, like basically like exchanges are one venue of trading of which like financial institutions can like justifiably like trade at, like mm -hmm. FTX. Yes. They Yeah, like like they can, they can, they, they can do flash loans essentially no, at a large, just, larger no, no, rate or no? An exchange is okay. just somewhere where you can buy and sell. Okay, okay. You need like- Like Forex, like the whole Forex thing, that's an exchange. Yeah, they, they trade on some exchange. Right. Like C, I think it's CME. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, but anyways, an exchange legitimizes a financial market. So mm -hmm. cryptocurrency has that going for it. But what I'm saying is, is that the tools are available now for institutions that have wanted to get into cryptocurrency to get into it. Mm -hmm. And maybe they continue to get into it. But I think there's key, key things is the macro environment could change and it could be a three or four year bear market. I really hope it isn't. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, that would suck. Could be. Right. Which, I, I, honestly, I, I don't think that would suck. I think that would be great it if would you're be not great. all yeah, in lot, because it, you have an opportunity. It is. That we have, now no, we so have we've, money we've to- We've talked about yes. That's what I'm saying, but yes. that's, and that's, why, that's how you as a, as a like small investor get ahead is stop thinking about tomorrow. Stop trying to invest to get rich for like fucking to buy a Lambo now. Yes. That's a bad mentality and you're going to lose money. You're going to get screwed. Mm -hmm. um, then this, the second thing is, is also the blockchain may advance without Bitcoin. It may be another mm -hmm. implementation of blockchain technology that becomes more widely adopted. And so that's another key thing that like, you know. Well, what Bitcoin does also have for is the fact that we don't know who the founder is the owner isn't that is, a bad you know thing? what i'm saying what isn't that a bad thing i feel no i think i think that's that well you know if you, if you talk to the bitcoin community like the ones who like really see it like essentially replacing the dollar they're like it's great because like there's no one person that can control it there's no one person that can turn it off there's no one person that can make this decision what they what we can do as a community essentially is like fork it or like like basically like kind of advance it we can have like a, a vote like isn't, a 51 percent vote the forks bad it depends on it depends on what's what like what 
why they're forking, right? It depends on why they're forking, right? Like the Satoshi Nakamoto, I think he came out like years ago. He was like, yo, like- Is this a real person? This is not the real, well, the he was emailing, like there was certain yeah. links or emails probably that like were- probably like some teenager in his basement that's just really smart. Yeah, probably you could, that for sure, absolutely, for sure. But you know, he, he people, a lot of people speculate that, yo, yeah, this yeah. is, this is, this these emails are the last trace that we have from this fucking great God Messiah or whatever the fuck, right? And um, his notion was the fact that, yo, like, you guys aren't using it the way I intended it to be used. But either way, I have no real fucking control over that. So, like, in, in his own words, yeah. is pretty much what he said. Like, yo, so, like, y'all going to continue to do what you're going to do. And then, like, my hands are washed from this shit or some bullshit like that. But, and, and that's the thing is, and that's the beauty is that the fact that there is no one person kind of controlling it, the fact that there has to be a massive vote in order to change how Bitcoin works, right? Um, Like, that's, 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 There's a, great, other that's versions a great thing. Of that. What? There's other versions. Yeah, you have Ethereum that's like more centralized. And right? Ethereum actually is the one, and I think Solana as well. But like those are the gateway into trading like NFTs. Mm -hmm. And NFTs, interestingly, but, well, Bitcoin could is is going to soon be able to trade NFTs. But are are they they're late to the market now almost? Right. Well, like, well, I'll give you an example. Open open not OpenSea, Coinbase. They mm -hmm. made an NFT marketplace. Nobody uses them. Because everyone just uses OpenSea, OpenSea already. Yeah, yeah, but not yet. You know what I'm saying? But but OpenSea, OpenSea is like is like a network. Right? It's like it's almost like an exchange, right? And then no, no, exactly. tomorrow it's another exchange is going to be more there's popular. A first, there's a first mover yeah, advantage. Exactly. Yep. There's yeah. a first mover advantage. Yes. If you if you're not like people get used to doing one thing, and it's very hard to convince people to do something different yeah. than what they do. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's like Uber. Like Uber came out and then Lyft came out. Everyone yeah. still uses Uber. Yeah. Like there's a small. I stopped using Uber. They're ripping yeah. me off in New York. But there, but but the thing the thing the thing about us is that we have technology and we're able to communicate a lot things a lot faster. So we're able to right. change the sentiment and mentality a lot faster than we were able to do before, right? So we're able to be able to be like, yo, Coin Coinbase is the shit now. Oh shit, OpenSea is new. Oh shit, Reddit is pushing it. Oh shit, all these institutions are probably pushing it on the side or some shit and they're making it popular FTX. and they got controversy and they got yeah, FTX, right? Now FTX is the the new biggest shit. Now they're partnering. Cool. You know what I'm saying? And now they're growing. So who's to say fucking people stop using Coinbase? See, but I guess that's my point. Is is yeah. like one, I feel like the majority of people I've met who believe in Bitcoin, they are not open about like the potential for it to fail. Mm -hmm. Um and two, okay. I feel like the other problem with people that believe in Bitcoin is they're like maximalists. Like, what happens if Bitcoin just stays like 30K for the rest of like eternity? Like, isn't that the point of a currency? Like, uh, and like, that's the thing is, is like, I've always heard Bitcoin people want it to be the new currency. Yeah. But that shit's like, it's damn volatile. Like, the, mm -hmm. the dollar is something which people use because on a day to day basis, they more or less know what they're going to get from it. Like, yeah. it's not like the price of milk, like, it, if you own Bitcoin and you tried to exchange with Bitcoin now, say you could go to your grocery store. It would be crazy, dude. Because then a bottle of a milk could cart, cost like $4 one day and then like $1 the yeah, next day mm -hmm. and then $8 yeah, the next yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, dude, mm -hmm. with volatility. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and that's the thing is the fact that these people, they're not saying this is going to happen soon. They're not going to say I mean, a lot happen. of them are. I, those, I mean, those people are obviously, like you said, like maximalists. Like they're just being yeah. ignorant to the fact of reality. But that, which gives, is the, like, that gives the community a bad rep. Yeah, no, it does. But I mean, you know, yeah. the same the same thing with stocks with Wall Street, yo, bro. Like, yo, y'all y'all are doing shady shit on the side. Y'all got a bad rep, but y'all still making mad money, right? Well, they, they y'all still y'all still reputable, y'all still professional, well, right? They've been but they're not for they're years not selling the, they're, they're not selling yeah. that idea to anybody. Like like what Wall Street exactly. like Well, they were weren't they or who who's the ones the banks were the ones selling the shit crap like wrapped in shit like as creditors or some shit like that? I mean for the recession, right? There are like bad products that come out of banks, but normally exactly. they're screwing their institutions. Like what I'm trying mm -hmm. to say is, is that like Wall Street, it doesn't really fleece like average people. I mean, they do, do they do sometimes like IPOs, like get issued at like, like the first time a retail person can trade it, it trades way too expensive and they lose money. Yeah. Like, I mean, there are ways that like individuals are, are screwed by things that Wall Street does, but in general, they're not like, it's not as predatory. I but think as, as, as some of the crypto community, they have very like, and and even into NFTs, mm -hmm. it's a very like pump and dumpy. Like, yeah. it's just a lot. It's yes. a lot worse, yes, yes, and yes. it's a lot more targeted yeah. to retail investors yes. than than what Wall Street because does. it's unregulated. Yeah, right? okay. and 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 it's, and my my thesis behind um why I I can kind of see um these people saying that oh like Bitcoin will replace will replace the dollar at some point in the in the future is because I see 
right now I see Bitcoin as kind of like, if it's supposed to be this big thing that's supposed to replace a the dollar, then right now it's still at its infant stage. It's in its teenage years, if anything, right? It's been around for what, like 10, 13 years. So as a, as a 13 year old, what are you? You're not really sure where, where, where you fit in. You're not really sure who yeah. you are. You don't really. So it's like, give it time to grow and implement itself in society, right? Well, like who's I, doing I, that? I don't, who, what do you mean? Like we're doing Listen, that. We're driving the narrative. Like whatever, no, whatever our sentiment is. We're small but, community. But, you know but, but the like, thing is that, yeah, yeah. The, thing, the thing is, is that you are like, like you, like you know how you go in your job and you have a con you have a financial language and you yeah. have a conversation and you're steering it towards an opportunity, right? Right. And do you see that conversation changing in like five to ten years to be like, yo, like yeah. now we're talking about crypto? No, I you know mean, what I'm saying? I mean, this isn't well, could be, yeah. And, and, and people are like, you know, like and that's the, like mass adoption. But I think the key thing is, is that mm -hmm. like, who's actually driving the technological change with Bitcoin, or is it happening somewhere else? And I don't think that most crypto people know like where they don't technological changes yeah i don't i don't think mm -hmm. most of them know because a lot so, of it's secretive so no no, no uh, i think the technology the technolo technological change is happening through um like they're updating the network called a lightning network they want they want transactions to be a lot faster well, right they need that you know they they really do need that and you know nfts nfts is essentially is is making us or like music um you know creatives yeah. right start their own businesses without having to sign like middlemen. Yeah, people it's like social funding. Exactly, it's cool. exactly. So, so it's, it's like those I things. I think NFTs, you know, well, that they're littered with pump and dumps. You know, 99%, right? Yeah. Because they're brand new. They just We just yeah. started hearing There's about them no three years ago. A lot of people are like fucking rugging. People. Exactly, but, and they're taking advantage of it, yeah. right? But the actual concept of using NFTs for social funding is pretty interesting. It's pretty interesting, yeah. But and it, and it's not a great idea to do now, but it's good to maybe start it and then fail a little bit and then, you know, try to see how how it grows. I like, mean, these projects that are emerging are interesting, but I, I just- Have you seen Logan Paul? I try to avoid them. You try to, okay. Well, he he did something very, very interesting. His like pictures, something, right? Something groundbreaking. Yeah, the 99 originals he basically created. He took crazy detailed pictures and he has a story behind them yeah. or whatever and he promotes it on his podcast yeah. and he's been working on this project for like a year now or whatever and basically like he has 99 pictures. Did he sell them yet? What? Did he sell the NFT? Yeah, he's, 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 he's releasing them slowly. He's releasing them slowly and people are selling them for like, they're bidding like $6,000 for each picture. Yeah, I'm sure they're Probably like and that's bunch. actually small in NFT world. Yeah. yeah, and 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 either way, he could be doing that to launder his money too. You know what I'm saying? Like, who's to know who's placing these bids, sure. right? You know well, what I'm saying? Like, and the other thing is, is that like, with okay, with Logan Paul's project, like mm -hmm. I can just control, I can just go find that, like, and I know it's like taboo in like the like NFT like community to do this, but I can just control copy, control paste the, the images, or I can see them. Yeah, yeah. And, what I, and, and well, the truth is, you don't own the image. You own no, the num the numerical right. number. You own right? you own what was minted on the blockchain. Yes, which is some identifier related to like a signature. Yeah, it's exactly. a signature. Which yeah. which is related to that image on the blockchain. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, but I'm not really buying the I'm not really buying the image. They can they can change the image if they wanted to. Okay, so then then what? Like, That's if you bought that project, like, what do you like? What, what are they gonna do for you? So the 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 um, I think Logan Paul's utility was basically that he'll give you like two percent, whatever if it if it resells or like royalty or some shit like that. Okay, like, um, depending on farming, certain, yeah, yeah, like farming, yeah. right? And then or like you know, there's there's so many different little utilities. There's just like two or three utilities right now that he's like doing, and then he'll be like, oh, like you get, um, like first come first serve at like a new project or some shit like that, right? Like you yeah, know, what I'm saying like if you're if you're this card holder, you have a wish list. Yeah, like a wish list. Yeah, yeah. shit like that. So like that's yeah. that's an interesting way. And the way he's promoting, the way he's marketing it too, is by telling these stories. And then people are it's blowing up on 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 TikTok and shit yeah. like that. And then people are and then right now the biggest you got to ask yourself who are these retailers that are trading crypto? And they're literally 18, 16 year old kids. I mean, it's like trading cards or Beanie Babies. It's like it's it's the only thing that's making it so like unique mm -hmm. is that in the past any of these. Like, and like maybe it's not a fad, but any of these trends mm -hmm. were physical, right? Yes. Like you could never really participate in a trend. Like like this right here. Like this is this is like yeah. my fucking fad. Yeah, I had like right. the Yu-Gi-Oh cards back in the day. Like, I mean, this is this is a common human pattern that's been repeated over time. But what I worry about is is how do you create staying power with with those things? And like something like mm -hmm. what Logan Paul is doing, if he's not if 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 there's no like if you can't attribute a value to what you're paying for it, eventually that price will revert to what the fair value is. Yes. Um, and so like there are a number of solutions in the NFT space mm -hmm. that are rectifying that. Like with Bored Ape, it's it's a brand. They've created a brand the same way Nike, Playboy, Playboy yeah. exists. They've created a brand at which 
many people recognize and can be used commercially. And as an NFT holder, you have commercial rights. It's protected under some fucking random legal shit. Um, but that's one that's one thing that I believe in. And that's like regulated, right? You want like regulation um, it's, essentially? It's regulated based on the project developers mm-hmm. bestow those rights on the holders. It's, yeah. it's, it's in the, like there's terms of service or exactly. whatever that like exist for each project. And that, and that's why like Ethereum right now with the NFT, with this whole NFT boom and all these things and the way people are Im- implementing them in society, they call, they say basically say, yo, like, Central, even central banks are kind of like talking to like the founder or the CEO of Ethereum, right? That weird dude, right? Yeah, Vitalik Buterin. So, how you pronounce his name really well? Vitalik Buterin, yeah. <laughs> but, um, sorry, they call, they call something basically saying, uh, they call it a flippening where Ethereum will surpass, um, Bitcoin's evaluation or right. Bitcoin's price point at some point. But it's speculative. Yeah, yeah, it's very speculative. But that's just like another theory that yeah, they have. Like, oh, because NFTs are doing so well right now. It's like now. the boring foreign exchange one where euro and, and dollar are going to be worth the same. Hey, it's almost there. Yeah. It's almost there. <laughs> it's like, I mean, what is like, foreign exchange shares are boring. They're yeah. like, yeah, we're going to get parity soon. And how likely did you think that was going to happen like 10 years, five years ago or whatever? Like three um, years ago, maybe. I mean, it, at one point it existed, but at one point it was like $1 equal to one point. Sorry, one euro is equal to one point six dollars. So I mean, yeah, it was it's unlikely back then. It was unlikely back then, but now it's likely now. So that and and that's that's the only real like that's because I, I can't give you a definitive definitive truth like that. It's gonna hit a hundred thousand, but I, I have done my research. I, mean, I do kind of it, understand and it. You've invested what you're willing to lose. Yeah, exactly, and and, and that's the most important thing yeah. is risk management.